everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Valley Vlog. My name is Callan Forrester and if you don't know already, this is a video series done by The Gleaner where I try out fun quarantine activities that you can do from the safety of your own home while still feeling connected to your community. Now, I don't want to alarm anyone, but it feels like spring has arrived. I am getting so excited about the warm weather and lilac season and all the wonderful stuff that spring has to offer. Not only this, but Easter is right around the corner. Today, I wanna to show you how to make an Easter morning classic, hot cross buns. Personally, I absolutely love this recipe. It is a little bit time consuming, but it is totally worth it for the product that you get. And of course, Easter has to be celebrated a little bit differently this year, so why not take a little extra time and make something a little extra special? All right, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, these hot cross buns are a little bit more complicated than some of the other recipes we've made in the past, but don't worry, I believe in us, we're gonna get through this. If ever I'm going a little too quickly or you get a little lost along the way, have no fear, all of the ingredients and the step-by-step -step instructions will be in the description down below. The first thing we're gonna do today is let our yeast blossom, so we're gonna mix our yeast, honey, and warm milk in a stand mixer and let it sit for about five minutes until it just starts to bubble. While you're waiting for your yeast, you can butter a large mixing bowl and a 13 by nine baking dish. Next, you're gonna add an egg plus one egg yolk, your brown sugar, vanilla, oil, and zests to your yeast mixture. Once that's all mixed in, you're gonna go ahead and add your spices and flour. When adding in your dry ingredients, switch to a dough hook on your stand mixer. Once a shaggy dough starts to form, you can add your salt and then beat for about two minutes until the dough turns into a ball. There is our lovely dough getting all nice and binded together. It is already smelling so good. I don't know if you can hear me over this sound. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Anyways. Um, yeah, it's looking good. I am very excited for the next steps. Once your dough is completely smooth and just a little bit tacky, go ahead and add your butter one tablespoon at a time, mixing between so that each piece gets fully incorporated. This is what my dough is looking like so far. As you can see, it's totally smooth. And when you poke it, there's a bit of a spring to it. That's how you know it's time to add your butter. Once your dough's looking like this, you're gonna turn it onto a clean surface and knead in two additional tablespoons of flour. Once you've added in your two additional tablespoons of flour, knead your dough until it's tacky but not sticky and then place it in your pre-greased bowl. Cover your bowl in plastic wrap and then let it sit for about 45 minutes until it doubles in size. Once your dough has doubled in size, place it on a floured surface and stretch it out until it's about half an inch thick. On top of your dough, you can sprinkle whatever your favorite fillings are. I'm going to be using dried apricots and toasted almonds. Roll your dough into a log and cut it into 12 even pieces. Then take each piece and roll it into a smooth ball. Place all of your dough balls in your pre-greased baking tray and cover it in plastic. Then let it rest for another 30 to 40 minutes until the balls almost double in size again. Now that the buns have risen, cover them in an egg wash and bake them at 350 for 25 to 35 minutes until they're a deep golden brown. Once the buns are out of the oven, let them cool in the pan for a little bit, then brush them with your apricot jam. While they cool, you can prepare the glaze. All right, pause the video. We have a special guest, my cat Marie, who is 18 and a half years old. Marie is here with me today to tell you all that next edition in honor of Pet Day, we are gonna be honoring your pets. So send us a picture of your furry friends on our Facebook page or at info at thegleaner.com. And who knows, maybe you'll even see your pet in the next edition of The Gleaner or on our social media. Say goodbye. The glaze is super simple. All you have to do is whisk together powdered sugar and milk. Once your buns are completely cool, transfer your glaze into either a pastry bag if you have one or a plastic bag with a tip cut off. Then all you have to do is pipe on your crosses and enjoy. Okay, I did in fact forget to film myself uh, icing them because after 15 vlogs, I still don't know what I'm doing. But I think the results are pretty stellar. These look so gorgeous. They smell amazing. I'm gonna taste one now and I will let you know how they are. Okay, it is the moment we've all been waiting for. I have a piece of a hot crust bun right here. I'm gonna take a bite. Oh my God. They're pretty big, so I only took a piece, but that means I can show you the cross section. Look at the little bits of fruit, and it's so spongy. Look at that texture. <gasps> it 
it's really not too sweet at all because there's not that much sugar in it and it's flavorful and it's spiced. I think this is a perfect Easter morning treat. That's it for this week's edition of the Valley Vlog. Thank you so much for watching. But before we go, we have to put something in our Good Things of 2021 jar. This can be something big or small. It's just about celebrating something positive every week. This week I put in that over the weekend I was in an online play and it was a weird and wacky experience, but I am so proud of everything that the cast and creative team was able to accomplish. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up, comment down below, and share it for the world to see. And let me know in the comments, what do you want to see me do next and what did you put in your good things jar this week? And as always, please stay safe, stay healthy, take care of each other, and I'll see you very soon.